another quietly insane week in AI with models generating McKinsey level reports. 360 million Indians getting perplexity pro for free and the Trump's massive push in the global AI race. Hi, this is Kush and in the next few minutes, I'll break down what happened this week in AI, why it matters to you and how you can use it to its maximum potential. Let's deep dive. Okay, Grok 4 is finally out after all the drama around the launch, but the model itself is beast. It beat Claude and Gemini on reasoning benchmarks and even on humanity's last exam, nearly doubling what Gemini has managed so far. But what's different this time is Grok 4 can search the web, interpret code, generate charts, and even access live data natively without any plugins required. It's trained with 10x more reinforcement learning than Grok 3 and runs on their 200,000 GPUs colossal cluster. And the people are already putting it to the wild use and even a web-based pitch deck with HTML structure and slides. One user even claimed to build better reports than McKinsey, complete with SWOT analysis and strategy breakdown from a few line of props which normally would take a team of consultants charging $100,000. If you're on regular $30 a month plan, you'll get Grok 4, but they've also introduced a $300 a month tier called Super Grok Heavy, which gives you access to the more powerful version plus early access to the upcoming tools like their AI coding assistant and even a video generation model that's dropping later this year. Perplexity dropped an AI-first web browser last week called Comet. When you open it, the homepage is more like a chatbot. You can ask anything and it will answer with real-time web data and citations. But the real deal here is its Comet Assistant, which can read the tab you are on, summarize it, answer follow-up questions, and even help automate tasks like planning a road trip, unsubscribe from email, or summarize YouTube videos like this. It's a huge shift from just copying text into chat GPT. Right now, it's only available in early access to max subscribers, but users are calling it Chrome for AI users. And the first real browser, Challenger, built for productivity instead of ad revenue. China again quietly surprised everyone, releasing one of its strongest open AI models we have seen this year. It's called Kimi K2 from Moonshot AI, a startup backed by Alibaba. The model uses a 1 trillion parameter mixture of experts setup, which works like a team of specialists. But instead of using all of them at once, it picks only the right one for each task, which makes it both massive and efficient. In fact, on live code bench, it got 53.7% compared to GPT's 44.7%. And it's fast because of its mixture of expert MOE setup, it can route different parts of a prompt to different expert subnetworks, which makes it more efficient than most of the large models out there. It also has a 128,000 token context window and was explicitly built to run autonomous agents, full workflows, book tickets and emails all in one, in one go. In the US, Trump has rolled out a 92 billion AI and infrastructure package, making it one of the largest government-backed AI investment we have seen so far. The money is coming mostly from private players like Google, Blackstone, Corby, and First Energy for the development of AI-focused data centers, upgrading power grids, and new research hubs specifically in the state of Pennsylvania. The idea is simple. If the US wants to lead in AI, it needs more than just good models and should focus on energy, compute, infra to run. And Pennsylvania's becoming ground zero for that, partly because of its swing state status, but also because it has a home to Carnegie Mellon and a growing AI quality. Publicity has partnered with Airtel to give away its $20 a month pro plan completely free for a year. So if you are one of the 360 million users, you can claim it right now inside the Airtel Thanks app. For perplexity, it's a massive distribution win. Instead of spending millions on advertisement, they've plugged directly into one of the biggest telecom networks in the world. And it's also a smart wedge into Indian AI market. 
So even if 1% of those users get hooked and stay, that's more retention than most AI apps dream of. Denmark has proposed a new law that gives every citizen copyright ownership for their face and voice, which means creating or sharing AI deepfakes of someone without consent would be illegal. Not just for celebrities or politicians, but for everyone. If this goes through, platforms will be legally required to take down realistic AI-generated images, voice or videos of someone if they don't give a permission. And violations could lead to big fines. It's the first law of its kind in Europe and honestly, it's one of the most concrete steps we have seen to tackle deep fake misuse. Germany is going all in on AI with a strategy to make AI account for 10% of their GDP by 2030. That's huge. And to get there, they are planning to build massive AI gigafactories by 2027. Just like a regular power plant generates electricity to run cities, these facilities will generate the computing power needed to train and run next generation AI models. Germany is betting big on building these locally, so Europe is not fully dependent on the US or China for the future of AI. OpenAI might be just weeks away from launching its own AI browser. It will be built on Chromium, the same base as Chrome, but with ChatGPT baked directly into the interface. So instead of opening ChatGPT in a tab, a browser itself will become your assistant. It also ties into OpenAI's bigger plan for operator that can complete tasks for you, not just answer questions. We don't have a release date yet, but considering the leak and the pressure from growth and perplexity, it's probably dropping soon. In other news related to OpenAI, this growing buzz that GPT-5 might drop as early as August. From what insiders are hinting at, GPT-5 could be the first fully unified model capable of handling text, image, audio, code, and tools all in a single system without switching between models. That wraps up for this week. Thanks for watching. Do subscribe and comment. What should I cover next? See you in the next one.